Hi everybody! I thought that since so many people on my channel give me tips that I didn't ask for, that I would do the same for you all. Hi everybody! Welcome to Jen's Fitness Center. Today I thought I would give you guys some tips if you're looking to start your home gym uh, just based off the experience that I had when I was starting my very own home gym. So first and foremost, I do understand that maybe our goals might be different. If you're a runner, then my suggestions may not help you all that much because you might need more cardio equipment or different things like that. I'm mostly into strength training, powerlifting, and bodybuilding. So if you're looking to get into that, you're a beginner in that stuff, and you've got some budget um, and you want to start your own home gym, then maybe this video is for you. So first and foremost, I think one of the most important pieces of equipment when you're first starting out is obviously the squat rack. Um, and depending on your strength levels, then I think squat stands can completely do the trick. I'm not a super strong squatter, and if you're below, you know, 300, 400 pounds, then a huge rack cage might be overkill, and you could probably get away with just getting squat stands that, depending on where you get them from, can range, you know, from 400 to a thousand dollars and actually be really really sturdy and quite safe as well as the ability to have add-ons that can help you that you can start to add more and more as you expand on your home gym so some add-ons obviously would be a pull-up bar so right then and there if you got some squat stands a few plates and a barbell well you're already able to do a full body workout because you can do squats you can do presses you can do and you can do pull-ups so I really think that squat stands give you the most bang for your buck in terms of how well you can progress your strength and your physique uh, and other add-ons too you can get dip bars to add on uh, you can get landmine attachments to add on as well and uh, you can also get the safeties. I know some people nagged on me when I didn't have my safeties. I don't uh, train super heavy, like I'm gonna die or go to failure, so I need the safeties necessarily, but I was really excited to get the safeties because of different exercises that I could do then once I got the safeties in terms of pin presses or pin Anderson squats and what have you. So pin, pin presses were one of my favorite exercises for quite a while. So it just added a few more uh, different movements into my repertoire. So um, yeah, I really, really support the squat stand if you want to get your first item underway. Um, and two, I know that you're going to have to start accumulating plates. Um, but for the most part, I was able to get every plate that I got on sale for a pretty reasonable price. I never paid full price for my plates and I was never in a rush to start adding. I just saw some budget plates on sale and every time I did so, um, I would get them. And now I haven't bought plates in a couple years and it's no longer an expense that I still have. Um, but obviously too, I never really needed more than 300 pounds. Um, so not a big deal. And same thing with barbells. You can probably get away with a pretty decent barbell for only a few hundred dollars. Um, of course, if you need specialty barbells, that will ring you up. Um, but it's all just slowly over time adding more and more. In terms of benches, uh, now you may be able to get away with a pretty light and cheap bench if you don't have a 300 pound bench press and all you want to do is some dumbbell press or some simple bench press uh, or some dumbbell row on it this this bench was less than a hundred dollars um and it was very light very movable but if i were a pretty strong bencher i think that i would feel pretty uh cautious or concerned about using it also some things to note about benches when you're purchasing that depending on where you're getting them if you're getting them from like a power lifter uh you know resource online then they're probably going to be more suited to you if you're going to be a pretty strong bencher but you have to be careful with things like amazon or other places because they might be wobbly they might be more narrow uh than you are if you're a bit bigger person or if you have a wider back then a really narrow bench might be kind of annoying for you um so just some things to keep an eye on if you read reviews uh especially on amazon you can really get a good feel for if it's going to work for you um I used this bench for a couple of years and then I upgraded to this bench um, and this may be something again down the road if you just want to get a quick bench right away to get started then by all means go for the cheap one it took me a couple of years before I got a bench that was just this this good quality 
But then again, it's also because I wanted some other add-ons. So that's another thing that you can look for when you're uh, shopping for benches is what can I add to this? So for this one, I could have just had it a, a regular bench, but I could add things. So I could add to do hamstring curls and I could also add to do leg extensions. And you also have to ask yourself, do I need a bench that's adjustable? How many movements am I really gonna get of an adjustable bench? Do I love incline presses so much uh, that I can't live without them. When I was more into powerlifting, all I really needed was the flat bench because my pressing movements were bench press, pin press, and military press. Now that I'm more into bodybuilding, I really like having the two separate dumbbells to do dumbbell press, uh, just because it, for me, it eliminates some of the imbalances or one arm taking over, and I feel it helps develop my shoulders a bit more evenly. So now that I'm bodybuilding, the incline bench serves me a lot more, uh, serves a lot more of a purpose. Another thing to note too, if you're wanting to start getting dumbbells, um, I may, depending on what your goals are again, I may steer away from just getting every single increment of dumbbells slowly over time. As somebody uh, has said to me a few times over, kind of nag me, Jen, just get adjustable dumbbells. Well, I think we're past that point now um, where I should have gotten adjustable dumbbells because I have dumbbells from five pounds up to 60 pounds now, and it would be silly if I got adjustables at this point. Uh, but if you're just starting, uh, a couple of adjust adjustable dumbbells may, uh, may be good enough for you. Um, I just, I never wanted the hassle of having adjustable dumbbells. I wanted to be able to do drop sets real quick, and I just like the feel of these betters, but it's all just based off your budget. So over here, I have a random piece of Amazon equipment, and I wanted to start talking about purchasing from Amazon versus purchasing from a kind of known reputable lifting outlet. So you can kind of get, get away with Amazon stuff from time to time. You really have to think about what are, what are the most important pieces of equipment for you because those are the things that you're really gonna wanna splurge on. Um, but some cheaper items on Amazon are not necessarily gonna be a waste of money, um, but you do have to take into account the quality differences. So for a simple thing like this, this was pretty cheap, um, but you really, really have to read reviews if you're uh, either really tall or really short because sometimes certain pieces of equipment won't fit for you. It won't be adjustable enough. And that's another thing to note um, with some cardio equipment. I know I was looking at different bikes and spin bikes and some of them literally could not be adjusted to somebody that's below 5'2", which is what I am. So you really should read the reviews to make sure that if you are a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, that that piece of equipment is actually gonna be usable for you. Because for this back extension, this one worked well for me. I've had other back extensions where I couldn't lower the pad enough because I'm too short and it hardly gave me any range of motion and they weren't that usable for me. So it's just something else to be mindful of. There are some other things. This barbell, uh, this easy bar that I got from Amazon, uh, was a wonderful purchase. So this barbell to me is just as good quality as any of the other barbells that I have gotten from uh, other piece, places like Bells of Steel. So this was not a waste of money. I didn't need to splurge and get one from a different place. This is just a good quality. But for this barbell that I have, this is much better quality than this old silver barbell that I got that was really cheap. So my lifts felt way better and my strength went up the second I switched over to this good quality barbell. So these, these certain barbells, there's definitely a change uh, when you're splurging, going from really cheap to going to a decent quality barbell. But things like this, this was great and it wasn't super expensive. The last thing that I wanna note is this little step up bench thing that I have to do my hip thrusts on. So, uh, this one, again, this was quite cheap and this serves me well because my height worked to me in, to my advantage in this situation because I didn't need some big fancy getup to be able to do my hip thrusts. I'm a very short person. I get plenty of range of motion doing my hip thrusts on such a simple piece of equipment. This was something that I didn't really need to splurge on. I know that there are some different hip thrust things that you can get through Brett Contreras or through Rogue and other places like that. I didn't need all that, all because I was lucky enough to be short <laughs> that I could get something cheap and I had enough range of motion and it serves me just, just fine. But if you're a very, very strong hip thruster, you can do hundreds of pounds or you're taller, you might need something a bit more heavy duty, a bit more sturdy to suit your needs. 
And that's something else to note too, that with my bench, with the leg extension, there were some reviews, some comments that some people felt that they were a bit too tall for the leg extension portion because when they were curling back down, their feet would hit the ground and their feet would touch the ground. And that actually made me jump on the piece of equipment faster because I thought, great, I'm short. I'm not going to have any of those issues. I'm going to be able to do the full rep, full range of motion without having to worry about my, my heat, feet hitting the floor. So these are just a few pieces of equipment that uh, I got slowly, slowly over time. As I said, I started with a squat rack and a cheap bar and some discounted plates, and that's all that I started with. And then I started to grow. Uh, I started just getting one dumbbell at a time. Then I started getting benches. Then I started getting hip thrust station. Then I upgraded my benches. And I'm sure down the road there will be other things that I will upgrade, but from right now, after all these years, I finally feel like I have all the equipment. I feel like I could have all the equipment that I'd ever want or ever need, but then why do I shop every, every day online in the morning just browsing gym equipment if I feel satisfied? Well, that's something that maybe you should warn yourself about is that you'll probably never feel satisfied that your gym is actually done, even though on the outside looking in, it is pretty complete. Uh, but it's actually supposed to be a very, very exciting, uh, exciting time in your life to be starting your very first home gym. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, and if not, then okay, but you don't really have to leave a dislike because that seems unnecessary. Just swipe away and don't leave a like. Um, but happy lifting, everyone. Bye.